Hi, and welcome to the Killen Report. I'm Jonathan Clyde. My pleasure to be your host for this episode. We have a wonderful program for you today. We have a very, very special guest, Dr. Steve Zornitzer. And Steve acquired his PhD from the University of California in Irvine in neurobiology and neurosciences. He's currently a scientific staff member at Secure the Future 2100, as well as being the vice chair of the board of the Arctic Ice Project. He's also the former associate director of research and technology at NASA, where he led the NASA team managing the design and construction of, at that time, the greenest building in the federal government. It was called Sustainability Base, and it's at NASA's Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley. Steve, welcome to the program. Thank you, Jonathan. Pleasure to be here. It's great to have you. We've got a lot of interested people, I'm sure, watching, and this is a, uh, a subject of the program is something that affects everybody in the world, and that is Arctic ice and what's going on with Arctic ice, what's happening, how is it affecting us. So let's just get right into it. What's going on with Arctic ice? Well, there's a lot going on with Arctic ice, and right now none of it is very good. Um, so let me let me tell uh, you and and your your viewers um, a story about Arctic ice that probably many of them don't know. Um, Arctic ice, the current Arctic ice that we um, have known all through our lives, has been with us for about seven hundred thousand years, um, and only since the Data, data has been collected by NASA satellites and NOAA and explorers going up there and actually doing real scientific studies on Arctic ice starting maybe 50 or 60, 70 years ago. Um, have we really learned a lot about what's happening to Arctic ice? And uh, to make a long story short, um, since 1959, when we started flying really the first satellites over the Arctic, and taking um, photographic imagery of the Arctic ice cap and collecting those data over time and looking at the changes that have occurred over time, have we realized that um, Arctic ice is melting and it's, and it's melting very rapidly now. Um, since 1959, we've lost 90% of the volume of Arctic sea ice. Think about that for a second. 90% of the volume of Arctic sea ice. Ice used to be 30 meters thick in many places in the Arctic. And now in, in very many places, uh, that old thick ice is disappearing. Um, the Arctic has contributed a tremendous amount to the stability of our climate in the Northern Hemisphere. And so everyone in the Northern Hemisphere in Europe and North America, um, uh, throughout the Northern parts of, of Eurasia, um, the, the climates have been fairly stable. I mean, there have been perturbations over time, but the climates have been fairly stable for hundreds, thousands of years. Uh, that's changing. We, we, we are experiencing that now. We, we attribute that to global warming, which of course is true. And global warming has begun uh, the process of melting the ice and the snow in the Arctic, particularly Arctic sea ice. And this is becoming a real problem and has be become a real problem because now instead of simply being a consequence of global warming, the loss of Arctic sea ice is becoming a driver of global warming. Scientists now estimate that about 25% of the total global warming that's occurring on our planet is now being driven by the loss of Arctic sea ice. And the reason for that, and this is a, you know, this is a long scientific story here, but to boil it down very simply, the reason for that is during the summer months in the Arctic, the sun is shining 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, as that sun warms up the Arctic, uh, the thinner ice that is very vulnerable to melting. And during the summer months now, um, vast regions of the Arctic is, are ice free. Um, that never used to be, used to be the case. A hundred years ago, um, ice persisted 12 months a year in the Arctic. Now ice is, is melting so that by 
July, August, and September uh, in the Arctic, um, vast areas of the Arctic are now dark, is, is exposed. The dark waters below the Arctic, um, uh, Arctic ice cover is now exposed to the sun. When that dark water is exposed to the sun, it, it absorbs a tremendous amount of solar energy and uh, heats the Arctic Ocean. And that heating of the Arctic Ocean waters transports its energy, its heat, to the atmosphere above, making the Arctic much warmer, and the Arctic temperature in general much warmer. So instead of the Arctic serving as a heat shield and an air conditioner, it's becoming a heater in the Arctic. And what's that, what that's doing is it's, there's a phenomenon called Arctic amplification. The Arctic is now warming up three to four times faster than the rest of the planet. So we all know about global warming and how it's affecting us here in California, for example, with the drought and forest fires and warmer temperatures um, and cooler winters. Uh, in the Arctic, that's happening three to four times faster than it is here in California. That's astounding. So let me ask you a question then. What's happening to all this ice that's melting? Well, it's just melting. It's becoming water. It's becoming water, and whereas it's obviously an extra volume of water that is used to be stationary, and now? Well, um, the interesting thing about ice over water is when the ice melts, it really doesn't change the overall volume. It's only when ice over land melts and that water flows into the ocean, and that water didn't used to be there, that it causes sea level rise. But the ice melt uh, over the Arctic waters, the ocean, um, doesn't really cause the ocean uh, to rise. Um, but so that, for example, Greenland, which is uh, a huge ice mass on land, it's melting also because of Arctic amplification and because of the fact that the Arctic is, is warming up three to four times faster than the rest of the planet. That's what's contributing to uh, a tremendous amount of water coming, new water coming into the uh, the oceans, and that's what's causing sea level rise. That coupled with the loss of, of um, uh, massive glaciers uh, in uh, Antarctica is uh, contributing to global sea level rise. So obviously it's a very, very dire situation. It has severe global consequences. Uh, is there any hope? I mean, what can be done? Is there anything that perhaps can be done to, I don't know, restore? Uh, Arctic ice? Well, we, we hope so, and we believe so. So one of the nonprofits that I'm working with, the Arctic Ice Project, uh, led by uh, Dr. Leslie Field, has been doing research for a number of years now on how to preserve and perhaps even restore and regrow Arctic sea ice. If we could do that, that could be a major um, uh, mitigation factor, human intervention that could mitigate the loss of Arctic sea ice and slow down the global warming process. Um, if, imagine if we could take away a significant portion of that 25% contribution that the Arctic is now making to, to, to total global warming. If we could reduce that significantly, we could buy time for humanity to decarbonize our societies get off a carbon economy, um, go to renewable energy sources, um, change our habits, adapt and, and try to uh, um, uh, take some of the carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that exist in the atmosphere, take it out of the atmosphere and try to restore our planet to where it was a hundred years ago or certainly to you know, near pre-industrial times. If we could do that, we would save the planet and chances are we would save a, a large portion of humanity. So the way in which the Arctic Ice Project is doing that is very clever and very simple. Um, Leslie Fields uh, recognized the fact that if you, when you walk outside on a hot summer day, if you wear a black shirt or if you wear a white shirt, you will feel very different. Uh, you'll be much warmer in a black shirt, which is absorbing a lot of that solar energy as opposed to wearing a white shirt. Well, she said, well, what can we do to put a white shirt over the Arctic sea ice and try to preserve it so it doesn't absorb so much sunlight and isn't, doesn't melt as quickly? And she came up with a method using a very, uh, a very interesting material called hollow glass microspheres. And these are little glass beads that are manufactured they're made out of silicon dioxide. And silicon dioxide is one of the most common 
uh, chemical compounds on, on the surface of the earth. All, all the sand in the world is made with silicon dioxide. So it's really a fairly benign substance. These are, these are little tiny bubbles, about 60 microns in diameter, about the size of a human hair, a little thinner than that maybe. Um, and they float on, uh, on the water. And they float on, they, they attach themselves to ice before it melts. If so if you can apply this material to ice um, in, the, in the early spring, just before the melt begins, then you coat the ice with this highly reflective uh, mat white material, which adheres to the ice and uh, preserves that ice. In, in experiments that have been done in lakes, frozen lakes in Minnesota and up in the Sierras, um, we can, uh, Leslie has shown that the ice can be, in, its longevity can be increased by 30 to 40% over non-treated ice that, that's simply adjacent to the treated ice. So if we could do that in the Arctic year after year after year and, and, and help that ice persist and get through the summer months, then we have a chance of decreasing the rate of global warming and buying humanity time um, to deal with this problem. You had talked about buying humanity time. How much time do we kind of have to get ourselves together for this? Um, you know, time, the clock is ticking. Um, scientists now estimate that if we do nothing, um, the, uh, the, all of the ice in the Arctic Ocean the, uh, during the summer will be gone in 10 to 15 years. No, no ice will remain during the summer months. Now there's, there's some countries that are gleeful about this because it opens up tra new trade routes, potential trade routes to the Arctic. It you know, opens up the possibility of new oil and gas drilling. And that's exactly the worst possible thing that could happen. So we do, we do have some time. And um, uh, if we don't act very quickly, uh, we will, we will lose this window of opportunity. Um, now, the, a second nonprofit, completely independent from the first one that I also work with, as you mentioned earlier in the introduction, Secure the Future 2100, uh, we're working very closely, uh, trying to work with uh, uh, a number of folks in the Biden administration to put forward a national research and development initi initiative, uh, multi-agency initiative focused on restoring and preserving Arctic sea ice. So if we're successful in doing that, if the Biden administration were to embrace this idea, um, then I believe we could in fact um, still have some time left to do a meaningful mitigation strategy and intervention in the Arctic to preserve Arctic sea ice. So in the very, very brief amount of time that we have left in about 30 seconds or so, what doesn't the general public know that they really should about this issue? Well, I think they should know that that the both polar regions, but in particularly the the Arctic, um, is is extremely vulnerable. It's being destroyed by uh, global warming, uh, which is human caused, and we have a small window of time left to try to mitigate that proce process. If we don't, huge amounts of methane will be released from the permafrost in the Arctic, and if you think the global warming has been a problem so far, um, this will make it a hundred times worse. Well, I really appreciate you coming on to the program. I wish we had more time. I'm sure that our audience uh, found your views and our conversation uh, interesting, informative, and I hope we can continue our conversation. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Jonathan Clyde on behalf of the Kill.